What is up, everybody? It's your boy Rogue here. So, I asked you guys on my community tab, did you guys, is it too early for a ban list prediction? Because Konami, when the last ban list was announced, said they're going to update it in a couple of months. A couple of months can mean two to three months. A couple of months can mean six to seven months. No one really knows when the next ban list is going to come out. However, with that being said, considering I'm a little bored of the current format and everything's pretty much brave and or bust for the most part, I think it's the prime time to give you guys a pretty decent bandless prediction. Um, I started this video, smash that like button. Let's get this video up to 200 likes. We've been lacking on the likes, so let's get them likes up. Also, after the video, leave a comment letting you know how your thoughts and opinions on this video in the comment section down below, because everything is not gonna be what you guys think it is on my opinions. We all have our different opinions, so you guys can let me know what you guys think should get banned in the comment section down below. YouTube algorithm is hella goofy, so if you guys can help me and support your boy, it'd be highly appreciative. Now. Balance predictions, man. I've been playing. I played in the regionals. I went 7-3 with heroes, which I think is pretty impressive to say the least. And on top of that, I've been playing consistently throughout the entire quarantine. So I think I have a pretty solid idea of what should get banned. So starting off with Verde Anaconda. People were saying, no, don't ban the Verde. Don't ban Verde. Verde is not worth it. I'm like, bro, really? Verde gets decks that shouldn't have access to DP, access to DP. It also gives decks in an easy way to splash the Red Eyes um, Dragoons package. And also in the death spills, it gives them an easy way to spam Super Poly, which can completely screw over other um, opposing fusion decks like Heroes, DDs, and etc. And also dark based decks because I'm almost positive Death Spiel is going to run Star Venom and Extra Deck. Verde, in my opinion, is one of them cards where obviously the dp people because people's argument is well if they banned verde they could um spam out dp with the predator plant engine and that's true or they can spam out red as a predator plant engine that's true however it's not gonna be as sweet aka as easy to do so and on top of that according to my knowledge you're gonna have to waste your normal summon to do that predator plant engine anyway it's a lot more clunky running in that way so i think verde should be banning verde allows deck building to flourish more because right now almost every deck that's not a archetype based deck like these base decks or these other type of decks that's not um base like sky strikers or whatever they can just throw verde throw dpe pay 2000 light points bring out dpe completely free i don't think that should be a thing so about banning verde that'd be really good um, some people disagree with it. I think Verde is the best option. Banning DP is pointless. Heroes need DP as a good boss monster. Limiting Fusion Destiny does nothing because if Verde is banned, yeah, people can run the Predator Plan Engine. However, they're going to have to waste their normal amount on that. And then on people who want to run the Fusion Destiny Engine, for example, right? It, it's already at two. No one's going to want to run two Fusion Destiny with two Hero Brick cards just for DP. And no one's going to want to waste their normal summon for the Predator Plan Engine. So, I think this is the best call, honestly, banning Verde. And then after Verde getting banned, I think Chris Down Hackles actually get banned. Now, this is a card that I said it should have got banned a couple formats ago. It stayed around because it wasn't really doing anything. Kind of like Mystic Mind. Like, Mystic Mind is another card I think it should get banned. Probably won't ever get banned, but I think Mystic Mind should get banned for obvious reason. But Chris Down Hackles Fax summon to Verde it limits deck building because the car is inherently unbalanced because of what it could do free synchro from the deck sorry free tuner from a deck which allows you to go into link plays which allows you to go, and it also does um synchro something on your opponent's turn like, it does a lot for so much little and i'm all for generic deck building like we used to play back in the day where old school Yu-Gi-Oh cards you just build a, build a pile of cards and play However, even back in the day when cars were ran like in almost every deck, like I've pe literally seen people run Christian Hacklebacks in like Eldritch type of decks, which is unique and creative, but it's stupid because you shouldn't be beating your opponent. Oh, top deck? Oh, make Christian Hacklebacks? Bring out this monster? Make three tokens? Oh, spit my half my extra exit field game. Like that's so goofy. Like, and maybe it's just salt for me playing in the current format. Like I've been doing decent, right? However, with that being said, I, I just think Chris Down Hacklefax, it's been around for a while. It's been around, I think, out over a year. It's very similar to Summoner Sorcerers from back in the day, the one that got banned, where it's like you bring out a monster for that. Very similar to that. So it's like, why not ban it? Like, in the OCG, it was banned for a while. I, I don't know if it's off the OCG ban list. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comments section down below. However, I just think it's an unhealthy card. 
And outside of those, those two, Verde, Christian, and obviously Mystic Mind, Ban Scythe, um, Artifact Scythe. Now, this is for the Scythe Lock decks, right? Because obviously if we ban Verde, if we ban Christian Hackleback, it's going to slow down the Scythe Lock decks, but there's multiple different ways to go Scythe Lock. And Scythe Lock, it makes decks like Phantom Knights overpower. Like, Phantom Knights is good. Um, Scythe Lock makes it overpowered. And with the Scythe being a thing and if you don't ban it now it's going to limit future card creation for the future because like they ever have a way to bring him out from the deck again or make an archetype of spam monster from the deck guess what people gonna throw scythe right in that deck spam out scythe and go from there so scythe been around since 2014 it had an entire deck around it the late cory roke not cory what am i saying the late um magic play cory mcduffie rest in peace to him he invented the hat deck that won nationals back in 2014. The car's goofy. Um, I think it's eight years running. It's time to go. Just ban it. It's an overpower card. Maybe we can bring it back around when we have more main deck monsters that can do stuff. However, since most decks nowadays rely on the extract outside of Eldritch, I think Scythe has seen enough time in the meta game where it's like, I think it's an issue when you see Eldritch in the deck of a Scythe lock. Or at the very least, your opponent, if you're they're not doing Scythe Lock combo, you're, they're playing like a random rogue deck. They side in three Artifact Sanctum, Scythe you on their turn. It's just goofy, man. Like, Scythe is one of those cards where it's not inherently broken by itself, but because it's so easy to spam, it's nutty. Limits to one. Honestly, I don't really have much limits to one. I think the Adventure Token Engine is the only thing that should get limits to one. Limit Griffin to one, even though it doesn't matter because they don't play one anyway. Limit the right hour major to one. Limit the whole banish the search to one. Limit the girl to one. Reason being, this engine shouldn't be in everything. It shouldn't be so free. Like the fact that this engine bumped up prank kids from a tier two deck to a tier one deck is freaking insane. Um, before this engine came out, prank kids was always a solid deck. It was always a solid tier two, tier 1.5 decks. Um, I used to go back and forth with it at locals um, with my hero deck because they both was like around the same power level in my opinion. Prank kids being a little more consistent because they could float. However, when you remove the only thing it takes from them to lose, which is the ability to get Nibiru'd, because with the engine of the adventure token, they can make the token, the Griffin, do their full combo, don't have to worry about Nibiru. And if they do get Nibiru, they can Griffin it away. Set up the board, which is going to give you a free two monster wipers via the Meow Meow and the stupid little fucking freaking fusion monster. And then they're going to bring back Griffin next turn by making another token, bring another Griffin. They can link off the token to the Link Spider, make a Verde, make a Bruh. The engine is goofy. And then on top of that, it has a free bounce. Now, the free bounce card, you leave it at three. However, with that being said, it's the way too consistent. It's way too busted. Um, Yeah, limit everything to one. We Gucci. Now, they can always errat it and say you can only do this once per turn or once per duel or whatever. However, this is limit everything to one. I want a healthy format again. Like, this adventure token engine literally, it also bumped up plunders from like a tier 2 deck to like a tier 1.5 deck because, like, hey, it's a free board wiping the gate. Like, if, it, if I could run it in heroes, I would run it in heroes. So, yeah. Um, I think everyone agrees adventure token engine needs to go to one. Now, my limited two, limited threes, these are really unknown. We can never predict these. However, I think Call by the Grave at two will be good. Um, I can see it coming back at two just because just to test it out because we are in a heavy hand trap format. And I'm not sure, even if we do ban Verde and Christian Hacklefax and the Scythe Lock and Limited Adventure Engine, that we're going to go back to a smaller hand trap engine anytime soon. So, having two Call by the Graves can kind of um, balance that out. Konami already made their money off of Cross Out Designator, so why not give us call, back, call by the gray back to two and then eventually back to three, right? And then limited to three, I have Hero Lives because I'm a hero player. And we bought it back to two. It doesn't didn't really do much for the hero deck other than make some of our combos more consistent, but it also made us more prone to lose to um Ash Blossom. So three hero lives for a deck that's tier two. Why not, right? Um also three red reboot. Because Eldridge is annoying. And I feel like back row decks like Elders needs more ways to get checked. Have a red reboot back at three, it can check those decks. Now, obviously, they're not winning everything. However, shout out to Bro who got second in Charlotte. He was running an Elders deck. It's one of those cards where it's like 
yeah, it's not going to outright be Eldritch. However, we need it for the format for we don't just people don't just flat out lose the cards like there can only be one goes in match. Um, Shadow and Prisoning Mirror, if people still run it. I mean, I think you guys get the point. Needless to say, it should have never got limited anyway. It was just limited to promote more back row heavy decks, which I get. And then also back to three, Harper's Feather Duster. Um, this is just because we already have Lightning Storm at three. That's never going to get limited. It's a really balanced card. We got Ragaki back at three. Why not give us Feather Duster? Honestly, I don't even know if I would run Feather Duster if it was at three. Like, it's good for, like, the Eldritch matchup, but if Feather Duster came at the three, people are going to side that Waking the Dragon, that card that when it, if it dies, you can bring out an extra deck monster from an extra deck in order to summon the conditions. And on top of that, like I said, most back row stuff could be chained anyway. I would much rather have a Rare Reboot and or a Cosmic Cyclone or a Feather Duster. Um, I might be the only eyeball here, but I think a lot of you guys can agree with me as well. And for what it's worth, hell, bring us back Heavy Storm. The only issue with Heavy Storm, though, there's a lot of effects in Yu-Gi-Oh! where it's like, if you destroy your own cards, they get effects. So I can kind of see Heavy Storm not coming back for a while, but Feather Duster, pretty nutty, man. So this is my balance prediction in detail. You guys can dislike the button. I don't care. If you guys like the video. I would highly appreciate it. 200 likes to go. Let me know what I what you guys think about my list in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think should get banned in the comment section down below. Right, I think this format doesn't really need too much. I think it's really balanced. However, we just need to tweak a few things to give us more enjoyable playtime. I think we're in a good era of Yu-Gi-Oh! as far as formats is concerned. The format, we haven't seen this many decks being viable since at least 2014. Um, in 2013 era, it really reminds me of old school Yu-Gi-Oh! where we have a lot of different decks. You don't know what you're going to face against locals until you get there. However, um, we just need a few things to make the format less nutty. All right. It's your boy, Rogue Hero, and I'm signing out, man. Peace, stay innovative. Deuces. You guys